Explorers, Kita Explorer here, and today I am here for my mid-year update. I usually do quarterly updates, but like the quarter, the first quarter just slipped away, so I was like, I guess I'll only do a half-year update this year. But I want to give you a rundown on my fibroid situation, as well as what else is going on in the land of Kita Explorer. So make sure you stay all the way to the end so you can see what this Atlanta-based travel content creator has been up to for the first half of 2024. Let's get into today's video. And before we do, please make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you'll be notified when all of my videos are released. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much. I truly appreciate it. Now let's get into today's video. So before I get into my fibroid story, because that's gonna be the longer part of this video, I wanna talk about a few updates. So if you follow me on social media outside of YouTube, so Instagram, Facebook, whatever, you probably noticed in recent weeks or the last month, I haven't been posting that much. There's a few reasons to that. Creating reels and content is very time consuming and I have been working on an SAP certification exam for my full-time employer and I need to pass it and <laughs> I cannot do both at the same time because that is so time consuming. I cannot wait for this exam to be over. Actually, when I'm recording this, I'm getting ready to take it soon. So I'll let you know, I'll pop something up on the screen if I passed or not. <laughs> So that is one thing, but travel is still a go. So I don't, if you know me, I don't travel every single month, every single week of the year. People see me on social media, they're like, hey, you're always gone, you're never at home. That is not true. I do spend quite some time in Atlanta. I do enjoy seeing my own city. And plus, when you li live in a place, you can travel and explore your own city and see new things there. So I highly recommend that, especially with how the environment and situations are going. It's not always um, environmentally friendly to globe trot across the planet on a frequent basis because um, fossil fuels is just not it. But that's a different story. Also, with that said, I haven't been posting videos around the environment here on this channel. I will have a new channel coming soon where I will store all of that content there because I feel like it needs to be on a separate channel focus there. So you come here for the travel content, Atlanta content, you gonna go over to Kita Explorer Photography for the photography content, and then you'll have another channel to go to about sustainability and environmental stuff. That is to come. I've still been putting out videos every Tuesday and shorts when I can. Those have also diminished in recent weeks because I'm studying for the certification exam. So for the second half of the year, I will be doing some other travel plans. I'll definitely be going to my hometown. I go to my hometown um, every summer and around the Christmas holidays, so twice a year. That is something I've been doing for a while now. Um, it's just the dates may fluctuate depending on what I'm doing. Um, and then also I'll be going to Morocco later this year, going to Fort Lauderdale for a conference, Black Travel Summit. So if you um, are going to join that conference, I will see you there. And hopefully I get a trip in November um, that will be based on a flight deal. And I'm also considering a Delta vacation package because I've never used it before to see how that works. So now for the biggest part of my update is the fibroid situation, the fibroid story. You may have seen in a prior video about traveling with fibroids and I'm just going to give a rundown of what's happened this year. Um, I can't even remember when that came out. I just know that video came out probably within the last year. So ended the last year, um, 2023, with having fibroid pains, excessive bleeding, all over again, even though I just had a surgery to remove fibroids in March of 2023. Unfortunate. So I ended up going to a consultation with Dr. Lipman at the Atlanta Fibroid Center and recommended UFE, so uterine fibroid embolization. It's what he specializes in. This is a procedure that actually cuts off the blood supply to the fibroid. That is the blood supply that's feeding the fibroid to keep it constantly growing and being a pain. Um, went to a consultation with him. He recommended it. He also told me I had six fibroids instead of just the two that my OBGYN doctor could see. 
and I scheduled the appointment for a procedure in January for February 29th. So on February 29th, um, my mom actually came down to help me um, as you need assistance for at least the first three to five days after proce the procedure. So I had the first procedure on February 29th, went in, it was just so wonderful. It's so wonderful to go to a private practice because the doctors actually care, the people actually care in there, and it's not as costly as going to a hospital. Definitely opened my eyes to a whole different field of health here in the United States. But um, it was nice. I was able to go into a room. My mom was in that room the whole time. There was TV in there. Um, and then the only time I wasn't in that room was when they did the actual procedure, which I think took 30 minutes. Um, they do put you in anesthesia, but it's more so to not feel the pain um, because I did wake up during the procedure, which he warned me about. And so I really was looking forward to taking a nap, <laughs> but I couldn't because I woke up at some point during the procedure. Um, afterwards, obviously I had to go through recovery and sit there for a couple hours and then came home. They gave different types of medication. They gave one patch I had to wear. I can't remember how long. I think I had to wear it for one to three days. I would say three days at most. Um, if I can find the information, I'll pop it up here at the bottom. But I had to wear a patch behind my ear to make sure I did not get nauseous. They gave me a pill that I had to take that helped with inflammation. Uh, making sure I don't get an infection or whatever. But if that didn't hurt, if, if that did not help the pain, then I had to stop taking that and switch to a more intense medication for pain relief. There was also medication given to me just in case I did get extra nauseous. Um, luckily, I did not get extra nauseous. Um, so that was great. And I didn't really get much pain. So I didn't have to go to the more ex uh, extensive medication. The first day back from the procedure, I all I could do was rest. I have I have a two story home, so I had to set up my first floor for me to to stay down there for the day because I could not go up the stairs. I was not allowed to really use the leg that the procedure was done on. And by the way, they cut into your groin, so right at the crease of your leg to your pelvic area is a small little slit, maybe like the size of a, a, a dime, but not like the, what is it, circumference, just like across, um, really small little slit they cut into. Um, and so that leg, I couldn't really use much and you weren't supposed to be on it. I also couldn't eat really heavy until I had a bowel movement. So I was just eating soup, jello, no, did I have jello? I think I did have jello and pudding. So I had to have that until I had a bowel movement and they really wanted you to have that within the first like day or two. If not, that will cause extra pain in your pelvic area, unfortunately, being gassy and stuff. So I was able to get past that stage, didn't have any problems with passing my bowels within a 24 hours. Actually, I woke up the next morning, flushed my system, thank goodness, because I did not want that extra pain. And then the next day, after you have your first bowel movement, after having the procedure, you can start adding in foods that you were eating before. Still taking it easy, still not walking that much, um, and just taking your time on that leg. Um, I, when I finally was able to shower the next day, I had to be careful around that incision. They left some bandages there um, that I had to stay on for five days. Um, and then after five days, I could take them off. But yeah, I didn't really have much issue with the procedure directly after it. I worked from home, so I was back working on the following what, Monday. Um, and I was able to actually drive that Sunday after, so three days later. Now, fast forward to now, which is June 2024. Mind you, after you have the procedure, it could take up to three cycles for your cycle to re-regulate is what my doctor told me. And also he told me, depending on where the fibroids are located, some may actually pass out <laughs> that you'll actually see, um, which uh, was disgusting. So that did happen. <laughs> it pa One of them passed and it smelled horrible. I asked the doctor about it and he was like, well, you have to remember it is something that's dead and you know, that thing smell. And the fiber it was dead and it smelled horrible. Just, I can't even explain the smell. 
But um, so that passed. Then I had my first cycle, which he also warned would still be pretty heavy compared to the one right before I had um, the procedure. And so it was still really heavy. Then I had a cycle in May, kind of heavy, but it was still, it was starting to calm down. And then mind you, both of these cycles actually end because before sometimes they wouldn't even end. It would just keep on going to the next one starts. Um, and then finally this past cycle here in June, um, it was lighter than usual, wasn't as painful. I had some cramping, but it was more nagging instead of just like intense pain that makes you want to hit somebody. <laughs> um, so I am so happy that it is going well. Um, I'm not bleeding out of this world where I'm losing too much blood. I was, it was starting to lose iron levels, having an iron deficiency and all of that. So this procedure, I definitely if recommend if you're having problems with fibroids, they don't have to be huge. They don't have to be small. You can go in for a consultation and he can help. And also the fibroids, I'm in my late 30s, so they could come back, he said, maybe in my late 40s, but it's going to take a long time for them to regrow and come back. So I am pleased with this procedure so far, and I do recommend if you can find someone who, if you have fibroids, to get a consultation around embolizations because that's something like my doctor at the hospital could not do. She did mention that as a possibility, but she said, I'm going to have to refer you out. And that was the first time I ever heard of embolization. And unfortunately, someone that I know ended up having the procedure in November of last year. So that's how I found out about the Atlanta Fibroid Center and Dr. Lippman. Highly recommend, but again, get a consultation, do your research before signing up for any type of procedure. Okay, Explorers, so that is my half year update. Hopefully at the end of 2024, I can run through my goals and tell you some exciting things that happened to me in 2024. Hopefully that meant that I don't have any more fibroid issues. Hopefully that doesn't come back. It doesn't look like it will. It's actually doing great, as I mentioned. I also hope you enjoyed hearing the updates about the fibroid embolization procedure, as well as things going on with me. So again, you can always tune in here for travel videos. As I gave you the lineup, I'm being Cleveland. I'm gonna be in Morocco. There's gonna be some Atlanta videos. So I hope you stay tuned so you can see what happens with that. Okay. And um, yeah, so if you have any questions, if you want to ask me any questions about the fibroid embolization, your female here dealing with fibroids, leave those questions down below. If you have any topic suggestions, leave that down below as well. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. Please don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. It is free for you to do so and helps me provide more and better content to you in the future. And if you're already a subscriber, thank you so much. I truly appreciate it. And thank you for always coming back to my channel. If you were, if you enjoyed this video, you can hit the thanks button to leave me a little tip or you can visit my merchandise shop link down below. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day or night wherever in the world you are. Bye.